Some of these heroes are definitely not seeing enough action in Genshin Impact, and these are the 5 characters we believe are currently underrated. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, and protecting your privacy on the internet has never been more important than now, since a lot of us have been working from home lately, and this can leave you exposed to hackers or data thieves. But by using NordVPN, you can keep your internet activity safe and secure. When you use a VPN, you're browsing the internet securely by using a server somewhere else in the world, and this lets you take advantage of not only owning your privacy, but also allows you to bypass country restrictions, so you can easily watch stuff you never saw before on services like Netflix, Crunchy or even YouTube. And some of the things we love about NordVPN is the setup that's only within few clicks away, and their super fast servers, and you can easily decide this for yourself with their 30-day risk-free money-back guarantee. You'll get a huge discount on a two-year plan at nordvpn.com slash gotchagamer, and even better, you'll be supporting our channel and allow us to continue making even more exciting videos, so make sure to check out the link in the description. Back when 1.1 introduced its first new characters into the game, there was a lot of excitement put towards Zhongli and Child, while in reality, a huge number of players ended up with at least one or two Xinyan constellations. But because at the time, shield viability was still in its infancy stages, that got coupled together with a character that's not actually a pyro damage dealer, but in fact a physical support character, well, it's safe to say that Xinyan's rock performance didn't land so well with their audience. And it's quite interesting because while she does have her own drawbacks like any other character, the more the game is heading forward with new updates, the more obvious it becomes that she does have a place in the game, and especially when it comes to the Spiral Abyss. Now, before anything else, it's important to address that it's possible to use her as your main damage dealer, or what's known as a hyper carry, that leads with damage and has the longest field time, but unlike Razor, that is also a physical damage dealer, and whose design is based around feeding him as much energy from his skill to go into his sustained burst mode quickly, the key difference between the two is that he does not support anyone but himself, which results in him dealing big damage with even mediocre artifacts. On the other hand, Xinyan's design is more on the defensive side, which means she won't get the same amount of value in terms of damage output when it comes to less powerful artifacts. Still, despite this unique design of hers, she's probably one of the most unique characters out there since her pyro damage goes into taking care of those annoying cryo enemy shields while also delivering very exciting physical damage from her burst and even a few swings from her claymore. It's also important to keep in mind that her weapon type allows you to take advantage of it by breaking geo structures if you haven't got another claymore in your team. Team. Not to mention, if you manage to unlock her second constellation, you get a guaranteed critical hit from her physical part of the burst, which means you don't even need to stack critical rate on her, and instead go for critical damage, since your main source of damage as a support is basically going to be the burst. And one thing that's easy to forget is that while the Spiral Abyss slowly changes the floor compositions, once we end up on a floor that has pyro enemies or even worse, pyro auras, her shield is going to become invaluable for your team's survivability. Basically, Xinyan is in a unique position that lets her cap the lies on her elements and also delivers strong physical support damage that also works really well with a lot of team comps, especially the ones where you use a physical main damage dealer. Living in the shadow of someone else is never a good feeling, and the never-ending battle to prove herself to players that Sucrose is not a budget Venti has been a tough fight, but now that she was literally put side by side together with Venti during his rerun banner in 1.4, those who aim to wish for the playful bard had to unlock at least some of Sucrose's constellations. In fact, as of making this video, there has been a total of three times she got featured in one of the limited banners, so it's more than likely the majority of the player base has this shy alchemist unlocked, and probably the two most common criticisms you will hear is that she's not as good as Venti when it comes to grouping enemies into one place, thus getting called the budget version of him, and the other part is that she only has one charge in her elemental skill before you can unlock an additional one from her first constellation or use Sacrificial Fragments Catalyst, which results in her generating less energy particles that are needed to power up her 80 energy cost burst, which is basically the most expensive cost for any burst in the game. However, the reality is she is a cleverly disguised elemental mastery booster, which ends up extremely useful for amplifying reaction teams. For example, she's one of the staple members of Chongyun's Melt Comp, where the additional 100 to 300 elemental mastery from her passive contributes to a nice chunk of increased reaction damage. And let's not forget you can put on her Verdescent Artifact set and shred away the enemy resistance for even juicier elemental attacks. Not to mention you can easily build her as her support damage dealer with an extra pinch of energy recharge focus that will give you pretty consistent bursts for the so-called budget crowd control option. And to 
be honest, an analog version of her would be Albedo, who actually also works as an elemental mastery booster. Not to mention if you give him Archaic Petra set, we're also going to be boosting elemental damage as well, so it's no wonder they have the student-master relationship going. And maybe it's about time we gave her a break and just appreciate how cool it is that Mihoyo actually designs a character around a very specific purpose instead of your usual roles of damage dealer or support. Either way, she's an excellent pick for nearly any amplifying team comp and getting infused with alchemical power is an exciting thing to experience on the battlefield. The life of a starter character is a tough one, especially now that we have noticed that they are secretly the most premium characters out there due to how hard it is to obtain their additional constellations. Nevertheless, this super high patch guy is not going to give up and proves to be one of the coolest cryo characters in the game by supplying us with never ending bursts. And in all fairness, you can also use him as your main damage dealer because of how fast his normal attacks are, not to mention if you do manage to unlock his first constellation, you're essentially giving yourself free 15% critical rate, which is basically almost the same as you would be getting from a fully ascended character with critical rate bonus. What's even better, you can easily use him in any of the strong team comps based on elemental reactions like Melt, Freeze and Superconduct and he can either act as a main or support damage dealer, which means you have the flexibility of going from mediocre to awesome artifacts and still get a kick out of his damage output. So if you're still on the fence when picking out which cryo character to use in your team, you won't get disappointed if you go with him, just keep in mind some characters like Diona serve a different purpose and that mainly has to do with shield and healing, but if your priority is cryo element for reactions, then adding him to your team is going to be a fine decision since his skill has low cooldown and so does his burst, not to mention and also has the cheapest amount of energy requirements. So maybe it's about time to go back to basics and use one of the best starter characters for your team builds. That or at least take him out to the tavern once in a while or else the bard will end up drinking all the wine by himself. If there's one character that's a ticking value bomb, then it would be our main protagonist who despite their silence can cause a lot of excitement if built correctly and used in proper team compositions. Of course, it's no secret that the Traveler doesn't have the best damage multipliers nor constellations, but because you can switch them to a different element, there definitely has to be something that throttles their performance or else it would be funny to have someone that can beat any other element in terms of damage. Still, that doesn't mean the siblings hit like a wet noodle, especially if you can manage to get your hands on some of the top free-to-play weapons like Festering Desire which unfortunately isn't available for those who missed out on it during 1.2 update but an awesome alternative is the Harbinger of Dawn which you should be able to obtain at max refinement if you wish enough times. And thanks to these weapons, not even counting the ones you could potentially have from the Battle Pass or Star Glitter Shop, just putting on them Harbinger is a massive improvement in damage and if you play them right and just swap in for a quick meteorite and burst combo, you can get very optimal performance out of them, not to mention how very useful the boulders are when it comes to blocking enemy attacks which proves crucial in stages like the 11th floor of the second chamber in the spiral abyss. Just keep in mind if you're going to be raising one of the siblings, no matter which talent you pick, the materials alternate between different versions of the books so make sure to plan ahead their talent leveling by using one of the community tools out there. But in essence, those who are ready to play the long game are going to be reaping in the benefits once more elements get added to the traveler and even now, having access to Geo and Animo within one character is flexible enough not to mention you can deal pretty nice damage just by using one of the free to play weapons. Now that you have had the chance to get to know Noel better through Hangouts, maybe it's time we take a look at one of the most underrated characters in the game. And while it doesn't make any sense why Mihoyo decided not to let her generate energy particles from her elemental skill, she is probably one of the best characters to use in early game when it comes to clearing the first 8 floors of the abyss just because of how important it is to stay alive through some of those annoying enemy attacks when you're struggling to survive with the horrible early game artifacts that you won't farm until you reach the end game adventure rank. And besides, the beauty of this made lies in her flexibility of dealing damage, providing shields and even healing, not to mention in 1.3 Geo got a surprisingly big buff for its team resonance and even her shield absorption got reworked, so if you're thinking of building a duo of Geo characters, you might want to consider her for this matter. Those of us who have been playing the game for a while all know that there is a popular saying, there is no bad character, only bad artifacts and in this case, this video was created with an intention to address the less popular character choices, some of the reasons why players could be discouraged from using them and then most important of all, some strong reasons why they could be good for your team. But which character do you believe is most underrated currently and why? Make sure to let us know in the comments and if you haven't done already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by enabling the bell icon and also be sure to gently press the like button. Thanks for staying with us and see you next time.